My dear brothers and sisters, just now we heard this um, Bible passage about Jesus raising a, a girl from her death. A dead person is, came alive. I remember nine years ago when I was in Divinity Center in Kerala, Pota, I was in English section. And whenever I go for outreaches and different places, I used to go up by car and our driver, his name was Vigilesh. And he was in his 20s. And we used to talk on the way and we used to pray and talk. And one, even most of the time he drives as if he's driving an aeroplane. And uh, he's a very fast driver. And one day out of curiosity I asked him what he was earlier. Just wanted to confirm whether he was a pilot or not. And then he said, Father, in the past I had an accident and I, I was killed in the accident. And I was kept in the mortuary and I came back alive. And then I was so curious and I slowly held on to the uh, front seat and because he even died and came back. So I was so curious to know his life story and he explained to me, he told me the story which I had some time back, I think two years ago, I had given a, a testimony of this boy in a short way um, um, in the, one of the live streamings. But I would, today, these days, when I was reflecting about this Bible, Bible passage, I happened to see his interview in our Goodness TV. Goodness TV is our TV, Divine TV. It is part of the Divine Rotary Center from the Divine Rotary Center Potter. And his uh, interview I happened to listen to. And then again, all these memories came back and had a detailed uh, story of his life was there. So I thought of uh, sharing it with you. He's a Hindu boy, he's not a Christian. He was born and brought up in a Hindu family. And uh, he was, when he was in his young age, when he was small, he lost his mother. After, within no time, he has got elder sisters, two elder sisters, and he's the youngest one. He lost his mother, after some time he lost his father. And then he, his sisters were already married and sent to different places. And he was alone at home, and then the eldest sister said, you don't stay alone here in this home, you come to my home. And then he went and stayed with his eldest sister. And that was in Tamil Nadu, in one of the another states in, in South India. And when he was staying there, he joined uh, in a lorry uh, to support the lorry driver. And one day, he had an act, and the, the, in meanwhile, when they were there, they knew many people. And one of the, fam one of the people uh, who comes, used to come to their home was uh, some religious sisters, or nuns, FCC sisters, Franciscan Clarice con congregation sisters who used to visit many houses, house visit. They used to go for house visit. They happened to meet this family. Though they were Hindus, still they uh, welcomed the sisters in their home and they had a very good connection, friendship with this family. This family is very poor family. They were living in a rented house. And um, it's very extremely poor family. So these sisters used to support them in whatever way possible. And one day when this boy was driving a uh, bike, suddenly there was one lady came in front of him on the, on the road. And he put the brake and then he lost control. And after that he doesn't remember anything. And then the sister who was there, uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the interview, these, these are the people, Sister JC and this boy, is the, uh, his name is Vigilesh and uh, Father Durbin is interviewing them. It's a beautiful testimony and it's in Malayalam, that is why I'm giving you this English version of it. So, and this sister told after what happened, after this accident, after this accident, suddenly uh, the people came around and his head, the skull was broken. The people could even see his brain. And then he was immediately carried. He was almost like a dead and he was taken to the hospital. Immediately was taken to the hospital. And when he was in the hospital, they did all the treatments, whatever that is possible. He had 54 stitches on his head and his skull has gone down and like a big hole on one side of his head. And he was in ICU for a long time. Afterwards, he slowly recovered. And then these sisters, some, this, the, this, uh, uh, this boy's sister 
told these nuns and these nuns came to meet her meet him in the hospital when he was in icu and these nuns came and told him he see you have to be very careful don't move and you just need to be taking care of you and you have to surrender your life to god and all these good advices and they were left because they thought he is recovering he is already recovering there is therefore is nothing to worry and meanwhile the doctor said he is okay now you can say take him back and then because of the uh, because they were afraid of too much of bill the expenses they didn't want to keep him for a long time in the hospital doctors also suggested now is better to take home and take care and he was taken home but they were living in a very rented a very poor family very poor house very poor situation a rented house not so hygienic places but when he was there he had an infection in the same area and then he became unconscious and then he was breathless and he was and then everyone said he's dead so that the land owner he came and said i don't want the person to die inside the house keep him, keep him outside outside the house they put one mat in front of the house and kept him he kept his body in front of the house and all his family members everyone was standing around him they decided they uh, declared him dead and then this this sister this uh, one of her sisters called the nuns and said sisters please do come because vigilesh is dying is in the last moments and it is we think it, we think he is already dead so please if you want to come and see please come and see then sisters were so shocked because they had seen him in the hospital recovering and within one month he is in this situation they were so up they were so shocked and disappointed and then one sister sister jc she came to the altar and she touched the altar and said lord why is this he was recovering we prayed for him and why this happened he is the sisters are saying that her sister his sisters are saying he is going to die he is already dead and they are kept the body in front of the house so why is this then sister prayed sincerely for him and then opened the bible and she got this bible passage gospel of john chapter 11 verse 11 well, chapter 11 verse 4 we read like this as she read this passage and the passage was this jesus heard it and he said this illness does not lead to death rather it is for god's glory so that the son of god may be glorified through it so this is the message she got it immediately she called another sister and they went to the house they went to the house and then they saw that body is laid in front of the house people are all standing there were flies the small small flies in the body and even in the mouth there was flies because it was so pathetic to see and he was breathless and the sisters felt so bad and they told why do you keep the body with the person like this we are not sure that the death is not declared but still they keep like this then the sisters said we have no money no money to take the hospital nobody to help no one is there and we are alone and the sisters bow down and to look at the person closely and then this sister noticed some movement here in one side and then sister said immediately take him to the hospital and the sisters arranged the ambulance and everything and taken him to the hospital and then uh he was going through the treatment there in the hospital when he was in the hospital after some time this infection increased and then the doctors and the sisters went back to the convent after 2 3 days the sister her um, the this man's this boy's vigilesh brother in law called the sisters and said sister he is dead and then the doctors declared him dead and he was taken to the mortuary and his body was kept in front of the mortuary for the people to see and then sisters when the sister jc came to know about this she was so shocked she literally cried in front of the blessed sacrament and said lord you told me that he will not die and you showed me the sign and there was breath and he was alive and then he was taken to the hospital in the right time and i thought this is what you meant to say but now he is declared dead and now i will never step into some something like this anymore and she was so upset with the lord and then she cried and she prayed and said lord 
let me know what is your intention then that is when she got this bible passage she opened the bible and she got this bible passage that is today's reading in fact the gospel of luke chapter 8 verse 52 or uh, let's read this they were all weeping and wailing for her but jesus said do not weep for she is not dead but sleeping she was attending holy mass the, she got this bible passage because when the brother in law informed the sisters about the this boy's issue and he's dead she felt so bad it was early morning it was time for the holy mass morning mass when she was attending the holy mass all her focus was about this boy and she was so upset with jesus and she was so disturbed and she her faith was questioned and all these things she was going through in the mass but only she remembers the bible reading and the priest was reading this passage and the priest said do not weep for she is not dead but sleeping this is the message immediately something touched her and she really believed that he is not dead he is sleeping immediately he got so after the mass as soon as the mass was over this sister and another sister they went to the hospital and then his body was there in front of the mortuary and his own lungi was there to cover his body and fully covered and then the sisters came and the doctor was there standing and sisters looked at him and then it is his mouth was opened very completely dead and then sisters told the doctor doctor please check whether he is alive or not and she, doctor said what is wrong with you all but this he is dead then sister said no father is a doctor we feel and our gods really feel, tell us that he is not dead he is sleeping then doctor was irritated and doctor hit on his chest two times and he with these nails he started making mark to hurt him to hurt so doctor said if there is a hurt at least he will show some kind of signs some eyes will move or something will happen so the doctor started doing some kind of piercing with his nails on his chest and the sisters was not watching it and when they looked at this when doctor was with moving his hand fingers on his chest his skin was just peeling off as if it is already decayed and then the sisters was losing hope and then the doctor said see there is no movement then sister said again sister doctor please do it once again and then doctor really got angry and disturbed only because she is these are sisters nuns he did it pressing on the chest pressing on the chest and doing the same thing more hurt giving more hurt so he thought he is doing it to the dead body uh, just to check but this man the the moment the moment he did this vigilesh he made he started crying he made a small noise then immediately doctor was shocked and immediately he was taken to the icu and in the icu and they put all these things and there was a lot of fluids everywhere in his mouth and everywhere here they removed everything and then they started giving oxygen and somehow he recovered from that and after the recovery and, and the sisters were there 24 hours they one by one they were in front of the blessed sacrament the rest of the sisters were sitting in the blessed sacrament and praying continuously for this boy and the other sisters were visiting them frequently the family was there all the all the details were taken care of. and then he slowly slowly re- recovered but his legs were all straightened not able to move his neck was like falling down no strength he could not move his hands but he was alive it's in a vegetative condition but sisters were very hope- hopeful and they were so happy that at least he survived but the family was so disturbed they thought he will be a big burden for the whole family and there is nobody is not married and he has only two sisters they themselves are struggling with their family they have their own family and children there is nobody to take care of him they were really worried and the sister said don't worry if if there is nobody we will take care of him and meanwhile the doc uh, one day um, they they needed to, he had needed to have some operation in his brain because there was infection in his brain and it was a huge amount of money and the doctor said unless you bring this money we cannot do this operation and then the sisters they knew this family has no money immediately these sisters they are franciscan clarice sisters 
they are from the same congregation of St. Alphonsa. So they decided to beg like Francis of Assisi. These two, two sisters went to the street marketplace, went to each shop and started begging for this boy. And somehow they collected some money and gave it to the hospital and then uh, they or, uh, operated upon him and he, he, that infection was healed. And one day when he was, uh, he was uh, recovering, though he was uh, uh, recovered, but he is not fully recovered, he is not out of danger, but he was in the ICU, I mean, just moved to the room from the ICU, but they were, he was under monitor, monitoring. They were, the, they were monitoring him. And one day, when he was there, he wanted to eat some grapes. He liked grapes so much. And doctors said, don't eat grapes, because if he moved, if he started chewing, then all these stitches on his head will break. Therefore, doctors are only liquids you should take. So, but he wanted to get some grapes. And after some time, when he was alone in his room, suddenly he was lying down, he can't move, everything is helped by others. Then suddenly, one lady and one man, and lady was wearing fully white dress. She, they visited them, visited him with one packet of grapes. And he said, this boy is a Hindu boy, he doesn't know anything about religion and faith and anything. He saw the lady and he said, this, her face was like, shining like the sun, very shiny. And he thought it is baby because of his high problem or his accident reasons. Because of the accident, he is not able to see the face of this lady because it was so shiny. And this lady sat next to him and said, Oh, you are the boy for whom the sisters are praying, right? This is what this lady asked. Then he said, yes, the sisters are praying for me. And then, do you like grapes? She asked. And then this lady started putting, taking one by one grapes and give it to his mouth. And he started chewing and taking it. And nothing happened. And after that, these two people, the man was just standing there, not saying anything, but this lady was the one who was speaking and they just left. And after some time, the sisters came. Then this boy was so happy, suddenly he found some strength, but he could not get up, but he, he felt so happy inside, he felt so encouraged, strengthened. Then he said to the sisters, sisters, the people whom you sent has come here. The couple who came, the, two, the, the lady and the man, they came here and spoke to me, they gave me grapes. Then sister said, which ladies, which, which people? Then he said, he explained, then sister said, we did not send anyone. And later, this boy was telling, later he come to know that it, is, it was Mother Mary who came to him. And this boy, from that hospital, we can see this uh, uh, photo of this boy and he and the sister. So this uh, boy was, uh, uh, let's see uh, this picture. So this boy, he was uh, crying and explaining these incidents in the, during, the life, um, in, during the interview. And after that, he, when he was um, uh, almost getting, um, uh, almost uh, going to be uh, discharged from the hospital, but he was in the bedridden. He was in a very bad shape, and his head was all, there was a big hole on his head. Now only scars can, can you see. So, and then he said to the sisters, I, the sisters asked him, where do you want to go from here? Because there is no home. The, the sisters, sister-in-laws cannot take, the sister, sisters cannot take because there are so many responsibilities. Then suddenly he said, I want to go to Porta, Divan Ruti Center. Because uh, he had heard about Divan Ruti Center. Though he was a Hindu, he used to say, in, from his neighborhood, many Christians, many people, those who are sick, used to go to Divan Ruti Center and get healed and come back. So that's the only information he knows about Divan Ruti Center. So he said, I want to go to Divan Ruti Center. And then they arranged a van and he was lying down on the back of the van. He was lying down on the, on the van and he was taken to the hospital, I mean, to the Divan Ruti Center in Porta in Kerala. And then he was attending the retreat and the, his, his sister also was attending the retreat along with him. He was given a, a room from the room, because he was bedridden, he was given a room, and from the room he was attending the retreat because he could not go to the retreat hall. And he was lying down and watching the live, the TV, in the TV, the live retreat that is taking place in the same place. And during the adoration time, 
Father George Panekul was leading the adoration time and he could see, but he can't move his hands and body. He could only see and he can speak. And he was seeing the video and the, life, uh, the adoration. And during the adoration, Father announced, somebody who is bedridden, not, cannot move. The Lord is lifting you up and you will be able to move. It was on the third day of the retreat. And she, he was telling me, Father, the moment Father announced, I found somebody pushing me out of the bed. And I, I was so angry and I turned to shout at that person who was pushing me. But there was nobody there, but he's already standing. And he immediately got up and he started moving and his sister started screaming and crying. And she didn't know what to do. And because of her screaming and crying, the, the other room's people came running and they saw him walking. Immediately he was taken to the auditorium, to the main stage and he gave the testimony there in front of everyone. And this sister was telling me, in the, telling in the interview, the sister said when he was in the hospital, when he was about to die, she touched the altar and said, Lord, if you are alive, I want to see him walking and coming to the convent without anybody's help, walking and coming to the convent. He used to wear a lungi edge, uh, uh, and he's, I, I want him to see him coming, uh, walking to the convent. Only then I will believe. So this sister uh, demanded in front of Jesus like this. And after the uh, retreat in uh, Divinity Center, the one who came in the ambulance, lying down in the van, now when they were going back, they went by train, walking, this sister and this boy. And then as soon as they reached home, he came alone in, a, in an auto rickshaw, he came in taxi, he came to the convent, and then sister was standing there, sister was watching from the window, and this boy opened the gate and he was walking toward the convent and sister was watching this and sister could overhear here the lord is speaking to him to speaking to her you told me you want to see him walking towards you opening the gate look at him and the sister started crying and sister came and welcomed him and after that he said i want to go back to divine and stay there and serve there and later he came to the divinity center and he was our driver and we used to travel with him so praise the lord praise the lord so this is the uh, the testimony of vigilesh and it was uh, it has come in a goodness tv but it's in malayalam that's why i'm i'm speaking to you though i had given this testimony many times in the past in a short way but this is the detailed way of his powerful testimony my dear brothers and sisters our god is god of god of this whole universe there is nothing impossible for God. The doctors and everyone declared him dead. But the Lord raised him from the dead. In a miraculous way, unimaginable way, the Lord has raised him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he got converted and he believes in Jesus Christ and, and Jesus is everything for him now. Praise the Lord. Praise now he's married and he has got a house and he has got children and he's leading a very peaceful life. The Lord has blessed him abundantly. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you believe, you will see the mighty glory of God. You just need to believe that he is alive. Ask whatever you ask, whatever you want, he will give you, he will provide you. And our God is a mighty God. Our God is alive and he is here right now.